Welcome back. What we're looking at right now is we're continuing on with the uneven growth model. Um, now, what we've seen in the past is that we've looked at these two models here. We've used the discount dividend model and the Gordon growth model, and we are just basically combining them. There's not really anything new here except for the fact that we are taking these two concepts that we should already know and putting, and putting them together, right? So we're essentially taking a two-step process now, right? So what we looked at in the past, right, is that we had taken that P1 is being given, right? We're saying, all right, we have a dividend next year and an expected price next year. We've just taken that expected price as given. Now, what we're looking at here is that we're saying, all right, we actually have a model, and we've already used it on this Gordon Growth model to figure out how to back into what that price next year is. Okay, so what we're looking at here is that we're trying to figure out what that price is, and we do that by showing this with a P1 to D2, right? Remember here that there's a one-year gap between them, right? So if I'm trying to figure out the price in year, say, 25, the price in 25 years from now, what we're going to be is it's going to be the dividend in year 26, right? Because there's one time period divided by R minus G, okay? And that's something that, that we, can, we can actually do, okay? So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually work, work through a, a, another problem real quick. Um, so we're going to say, all right, what happens? We have a company, okay? We have a company that's a, a brand new company. They're not paying any dividends right now. So or they're paying a low dividend, but they're investing a lot in their company. So we're expecting higher growth in the future, okay? Um, so what we're going to say here is, is this example is that we're going to say that our growth right now for the next, say, three years okay, is going to be at 2%, okay? Um, we're going to say that the growth rate thereafter, okay, so every year after three years from now is going to be at, uh, say, 5%, okay? And we're going to say, so, and we're going to say that our required return on this stock itself is 9%. Okay, so we need to get a 9% return on the stock. And they just paid a dividend today in the amount of $1.26. Okay. Now, do we have enough information here to back this into and figure out what our current price is going to be? Well, yes, we do. Okay. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to set this up so we know that, that our growth rate is going to be at 3%. So we know we're going to have to find D1, D2, and D3. Right? So how we're going to go in, into this is that we know that D1, right? I'll write this up top. D1 is equal to uh, D0 times 1 plus G, right? We know that. Okay? And we know that same thing, we have a one period lag here, is that D2 is going to be equal to D1 times 1 plus G. D3 is going to be equal to d2 times 1 plus g. So we actually have the way to back this in and figure all this out, okay? So we know that d1 is going to be equal to 1.26 multiplied by the 2% growth rate. We know that d2 is going to be equal to d1 is going to be equal to d1 which is is equal to $1 $1.29, okay? And so we know D2 is going to be equal to $1.29 times that multiplied by that growth rate, which is at the 2%, which is going to be equal to $1.32. Okay, so we know that D3 is going to be equal to D2, which is 132, multiplied by that 2% growth rate which puts us in at $1.35, okay? So we have D1, D2, D3, um, and so now what we can do is we can just start setting this up, okay? Uh, so what we're gonna look at here is we're gonna figure out, all right, P0, okay? So P0, so we have those three years of dividends, so we're gonna have D1, D2, D3, and then P3, right? That's what's gonna be actually inserted into uh, this, this e equation here, okay? So we're going to have D1, which was given to us in this amount of uh, $1.29. Uh, we have D2, which is that $1.32. We have D3, which is that $1.35. Okay? And then this is going to be discounted here. So we're going to have our discount rate is at 9%. So this is 1.09. D2 is going to be 1.09 squared. D3 is going to be 1.09 cubed. And then we're going to have P3 in here 
which is 1.09 to the third. And so what we're having to do here is we're having to figure out, all right, how do we come up with P3? Okay, so we know that P3 is going to be equal to lagging that dividend back one more period is going to be equal to D4 divided by R minus G, which we know this is also equal to, right, D3 times 1 plus G divided by R minus G. Okay, so if we don't have D4, right, we have to take the previous dividend, right, which is that D3, and then we have to grow that by that growth period. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at here is that P3 is going to be equal to uh, D3 times 1 plus G, right, 1.35 multiplied by our new growth rate, which is 5%, right, 1.05, and that's now divided by R minus G, so 0 0.09 minus 0 0.05, which tells us our current price, or excuse me, our price in year three is $35.00. And 44 cents. And this value here ends up coming up and gets inserted as P3, 3544. Okay. So that's the way we set it up. And now we have everything in our basic time value of money formula, and we can just solve each of these components individually, which gives us those values. Okay, and then we add all those up, and that brings us to telling us that our price is. $30.70, okay? So what we've shown here, what I want to show, say here is that, right, we have done the basic discount dividend model, okay? And what we did is we had to back into P3. We had to figure out exactly what P3 was by combining those models, by combining that Gordon growth, that constant growth model with the discount dividend model. And we were able to come up with this and say, hey, this, this stock itself is worth $30.70, okay?